pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Greg. Um, is your mic on, Tom? No. that our schools are located on the ancestral homelands of the Quaker people who have lived in Chica since time immemorial. We express our deepest respect and gratitude for our indigenous neighbors the Quaker for their enduring care and protection of Quaker farms. Roll call. Caitlin um, Myers. Here. Todd Gibbler. Here. Tristan Gamon. Here. Melanie Ward. Here. Danny Snyder. Here. Tom Williams. Here. All are present. The meeting is for it. Thank you. Number five. Number five. Consent agenda. Got a motion to approve the proposed agenda. I move to approve the proposed agenda and consent agenda as presented. Can I have a second, please? Second. This motion has been approved and seconded to approve the proposed agenda and consent agenda as presented. Uh, Donald, have a roll call, please. Felix Myers? Yes. Todd Gebler? Yes. Tristan Gavon? Yes. Melanie Gord? Yes. Danny Snyder? Yes. Tom Williams? Yes. Motion passes. There you go. Just combining the, the um, persons to be heard on and off the agenda. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, item six uh, persons to be heard. We will combine the, both the non agenda items and agenda items. Um, persons to be heard is an opportunity for members of the public to speak about board topics that are and are not on the agenda. These items are not agenda items, sorry, these, as these items, as these are not items, agenda items, no board deliberation or action will occur in response. Questions for clarification may be posed by board members. The board may choose to refer items to the superintendent or designate for further action. The standard time limit for comments will be three minutes, unless otherwise stated by the board president with consent of the board. A timer is used and sound will indicate when time expires. All comments must be respectful and charges or complaints against specific employees are not permitted per Alaska statute. Members of the public are referred to board policies 1312, 13.1, 13.2, 13.12.3, and associated administrative regulations as well as board bylaws 9323A for information about how to lodge complaints. Speakers are also asked to please state your full name for the record prior to speaking. Do we have anybody for persons to be heard, non-agenda items, and agenda four agenda items? Both. Hello, um, my name is Freddie Charbonneau, and I am here to talk about um, the reestablishment of the strategic plan committees. Um, I was on those uh, one of those committees um, last year, and um, I just wanted to say um, thank you for people who are um, wanting to bring it back, because I think it's really important. Um, as both a parent and um, a teacher at Zika High School, um, I find that these strategic planning committees are incredibly important for the community to understand the direction of this district, um, where we're trying to go, what we're trying to do. 
And so, um, and it gives us a common language. And so for me, um, I think it's really important that we bring them back um, and that we continue in the direction that we were working because I think we would have made some really good progress and um, it was all for the students, which is what we're here for. And um, I also wanted to add that I was um, looking at the proposal, the, the discussion um, that was attached to this agenda. I was really appreciative of seeing that you had um, up to six students that you wanted to participate in this um, in these uh, strategic committees. I think it's really important that we get student voice. And um, as I will be helping with the student council at Sika High, um, while um, Ms. Gray is on maternity leave, um, I would really like to be a part of mentoring those students and making sure that they um, that their voices are, are being heard. Um, I would be happy to also uh, work in conjunction with the middle school, um, with Pacific High, to try and um, make sure that those students um, have their voices heard and are part of the of these strategic plans. So um, I just wanted to um, say that I'm very grateful um, for all of you to be here um, and to support our students. And I think um, we need to move forward with um, bringing these communities back. Thank you. Anybody else? I am the interim director of the Cultural Resources um, Education and Employment Department at uh, Sitka Tribe of Alaska, and this is my colleague Hillary Mbadu. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. I'm Hillary. Kasna Kiyu Hut Du Wasak Chukunedi Aya Hut Takde Tan Yadi Hut Siti. My Finnegan name is Kasna and I am Chukunedi and I'm a child of the Takde Tan clan. And I'm excited to be here. And so uh, we're um, charged with bringing um, sort of our government government relations in the education field to the school board. So we usually come and give a little report if we have anything going on. Um, and so today, I think we just want to let you know that um, our after school program, the Second Native Education Program, is during up for the school year. And um, after school, there will be registration for after school programming coming up soon. And then. Yeah, I just wanted to briefly tell you about the family camps that we held this summer. They were really successful. Um, instead of hosting regular day camps, we hosted evening and weekend family camps where students could bring um, their parents or guardians and one of our elders, Ann Johnson, that this was one of our best ideas that we've had in a long time. Um, the themes were plants, pesto and tea, uh, devil's club, berries, and salmon. And yeah, it was really, it was really successful and really excited to see the students engage with our staff and also their families. Um, and the other thing I wanted to share is um, we're hosting our annual back to school backpack and school supply distribution on October 19th in the SEEK building at 205 Baranoff Street. And this is happening at the same time as our annual picnic, which is going to be held at the Baranoff playground. So a big thank you to Jill and the Baranoff staff for allowing us to use that space for, for one of our biggest events of the year. And then I just want to finish up uh, sort of mentioning our excitement to be partnering with the school district on the new STEM in Schools program, which is um, a collaborative effort to integrate uh, both cultural content and cultural responsive pedagogy into the schools to the greatest extent that we can to sort of better serve um, students from diverse cultures. And so um, we're super excited. We have hired a curriculum writer on our side, um, and we have a really, really great um, highly experienced consultant working with us. Um, and then uh, we have a dream to agree with you all to um, fund a couple of positions for you to, to focus on this work with the teachers. And so it's really exciting and we're thankful for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? So for any um, 
such reports coming out of government? Okay. Uh, moving on, item eight, reports and presentations. Um, CLSP grant. Um, Principal Lacrone and Principal Perry. I'm excited. I go into this a little bit last night. I'm really anxious to hear about this. Well, it sounds like you guys did a ton of work on this. Yeah, we did. I'm um, excited to share with you guys tonight because I think you've heard a lot about the Alaska Reads Act and kind of the daunting um, workload it's going to you know, cause for all of our teachers. And so I think we did something really cool. You want to talk about it? Well, I would love to. Um, it was <laughs> really um, funny, you know, of course, we're both on the same email thread with the uh, Department of Education, and so um, in May, I got the email update and immediately te um, emailed Frank, and Jill got the same one and texted Frank, and all of a sudden, before we knew it, we had 15 minutes to get our letter of intent in. <laughs> um, so we joined Chris and uh, Frank, and we put our letter in uh, for this grant. Um, and then fast forward to June, and we uh, connected over the summer, and Jill um, put in a lot of time and work and connected with uh, Sarah Ferenzi to start uh, writing the grant, um, and really basically trying to uh, create something to uh, provide resources for uh, supporting the Alaska Reads Act um, and for our professional development for our staff. Um, providing opportunities to make sure that we're getting the training for our staff because there are requirements to be trained in the science of reading um, by next July. Um, and also, of course, getting resources for our students and, um, and more resources for, and more staff, staffing for our, our uh, buildings as well. And I think one thing that's really exciting about the grant and the money that we got is to pro provide training for our teachers to become better um, reading teachers, not just the reading teachers, but our classroom teachers. So this is only a one-year grant. It was $485,000-ish for one year, but it's going to go away. And when it goes away, we don't want to have a hole like, oh, now we don't want we don't know what to do. What we want is for our teachers to be able to say, we are competent reading teachers, whether you're teaching first grade, third grade, whatever. So when this goes away, we'll feel good about it. So it's a really good plan. So that it's we had a great team. Yeah, awesome. A special thank you, thank you to Sarah Renzi as well, because she uh, played a big part in, in helping us complete that and submit it on time. <laughs> yeah, that was hard. Um, grants are hard to write. <laughs> so do you guys have any questions about it? Was it uh, pretty competitive? Was there 16 or 17 different regions that were only I think this grant. Yeah, the entire state. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, this is Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Hi. Can you tell me more about the, the staffing? The, um, how many positions, and will you be taking pairs to fill those positions, or can you tell me more about them? Absolutely. So in our... Um, in our grant, we um, are going to hire two certified um, teachers to be reading teachers, but also to provide professional development and training to our K-3 teachers and even our 4 or 5 teachers. Um, and then we also have in our budget, um, we're still, yeah, we're kind of still working on the rest of it, and then some money for supplies um, for books and stuff, um, new books. Um, that go along with the science of reading that can get in the hands of our kids. Yeah. And so we have one uh, new reading or interventionist, at obviously, like one at Heat and one at Barron Office. So. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't clear on that. It's clear <laughs> in my head. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. um, I just want to say um, thank you for getting this grant done. Um, I know. Um, how limited um, the pool was for getting these things out um, and so for our district to, to get all the, the, this extra help that's coming um, is going to be really helpful especially with how, um, how big the requirements are so thank you for that because I know that um, not getting this was the, the Reads Act is, is a struggle for sure and so but it's going to be incredible for our students so thank you for, for getting that done for sure
off, I just would like to extend a uh, warm welcome to uh, Mr. Bradshaw, our Thank you. new uh, interim uh, superintendent. Not new. I mm -hmm. keep saying new, of course, but I mean, it's, it's, it's Mr. Bradshaw. I mean, Thank you for being with us, Mr. Bradshaw. Welcome, Thank Mr. Bradshaw. Um, our new um, our new board member, Ms. Williams. Thank you for coming on board. Do appreciate that. And uh, Deidre Jensen, our uh, assistant superintendent. Thank you very much for coming on board. Just want to extend a warm welcome to you guys. Thank you. With that. Um, as far as uh, the board member reports, kind of light. July is historically that month where there is not a schedule board meeting, everyone's on vacation, or you know, students and teachers are, are away, but uh, this July was not as, it was a little bit busy. We, we did a couple meetings and had some, had some things to do, and it was it was interesting, it was good, but um, happy to be here, and uh, anxious to get the school year going. Um, whatever does come our way this year, um, I know as a board, we'll get through it, as a community, we'll get through it, teachers will get through it, we'll cut the best teachers around. And I know whatever does come our way, if we will figure it out and get through it. So, I have to be part of it. This is Danny. But um, I just wanted to say that I didn't put in for the election and um, I just want people to know that there's a direct conflict between my fire department work and the school board, and I didn't quite know how much time everybody here puts in, and I really appreciate it, and I love the school board, but I cannot uh, keep doing it, so thanks. I, uh, I guess the only thing I need to report on is I'll be meeting with Steve and Jill on Monday to uh, discuss the uh, Baranoff School renaming and uh, getting that committee together. So we have a plan to meet on Monday. That's about it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> excuse me. I think like all of you, just a couple small things. I think a lot of what I've been working on and spending my time on is covered later on in the agenda with the, the items on reestablishing the budget committee and the strategic planning committee. Um, so you can kind of see some of my new thoughts there in the memo on the budget committee. Um, and then the other one is, is back from January and I've still just kind of been thinking about, about the strategic planning committee. Um, one thing also that I'm kind of following and that I think is important for, for folks to know about um, is the letter that the Juno School District received early last month um, from the Dunleavy administration kind of questioning whether the um, non-instructional contribution from the, the city of Juno um, is allowable or is legal under the Alaska Constitution. And so kind of tracking that um, just because it could potentially have big implications on our budget, um, you know, if the state is considering that non-instructional contribution to, to not be allowable or to, to count towards the cap. So just something, you know, I'm trying to follow and um, actually had a chance to, to meet with Frank when I was in Juno for work and, and got a little bit more detail on that. So just something I'm kind of following. And the last thing is, is more, I guess on the personal side, but I, I just wanted um, to kind of put it on record or let everybody know that uh, I have a new employer. And so I'm no longer employed with uh, Sika Tribe of Alaska uh, after almost 15 years there, um, you know, and a lot of, um, yeah, just a lot of good memories, good work, good colleagues um, who I'm going to miss, but uh, looking forward to continue working with uh, in this school board role. And I'm currently um, accepted a new job and started this past month with the Association of Alaska School Boards uh, with their uh, Conditions for Learning team. I'm managing a Department of Ed full service community school grant that involves four districts in Southeast and six schools 
unfortunately not the, the sickest school district at this point, but maybe in the future. So I just wanted to share that news um, since my employer is different and you know that may affect kind of some of those conflict or interest of interest or perceived conflict of interest um, situations. Thank you, Tristan. Thanks for that. And um, Mr. Mr. Williams, I don't suspect you have a job out for Thank you. Uh, oh, Felix. Hey, how's it going? Sorry, Felix. I can't forget you. Uh, no, it, it's all good. Um, excuse me. Um, all I have to report is that um, I spent my July reading over a thousand public comments from the state um, about. Uh, new regulation changes um, that are going to be hap that are possibly happening tomorrow, um, surrounding whether or not uh, transgender students can compete uh, on the sport of their uh, the gender that they express, um, and so um, that has implications for um, the way that we run policy in the next few years, depending on if that gets passed tomorrow or not. Um, and so that's been what I've been what I've been reading and what I've been doing for my July. But, um, so, uh, yeah, I just, uh, everyone, uh, keep thinking about this and, and, yeah, I just, uh, want people to know that this is something that is, that is coming to our state. Um, it's been happening a lot in the lower 48, but, um, yeah, so that's, that's what, that's what's happening in our state right now. That's what, that's what we're doing. size that I can read it. Um, <laughs> and, and I thought Leslie normally did the budget report, but Leslie, would you like to report her? Um, I can report that we're still booking our June and July um, monies, but uh, I don't have an actual budget report that is produced yet. Um, we're, I can go back and finish it up and get it back later today, but uh, as far as starting out in July, everything is on track as far as our FY24 and our FY23 revenue is looking like it's going to come in better and our expenditures will be less, which will mean that we will probably end up with an anticipated higher uh, fund balance at the end of FY20. But until the audit is over, we're waiting for the, that final number for publication. I know you're working 30 hour on that. Um, I want to ask you for an estimated uh, <laughs> All right. Okay. Sorry about that. George, I'm sorry. Oh. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Sir. yes. Uh, so Tristan and Melanie did not hear that. Oh. Um, so I did maybe just summarize her. Can you guys? Can you guys hear me? Yes, Todd. We couldn't hear whoever was talking. Can you kind of summarize what was said? Sure. We're just on item ten. We're talking about um, the budget updates. Um, and uh, I, was, I was thinking uh, Superintendent Bradshaw would have a budget update, but we were talking, it, we went to. Um, do you want me to be summarized? Uh, if you could, please, yeah. Uh, Leslie had a brief um, synopsis of the budget update. And she's going to repeat it here in a second. Good evening, Leslie. Can you turn that one off? This can, one? Can you guys hear that? Please. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we are still in the middle of booking our FY23 revenue and expenditures and trying to close out our FY23 year. We are on track on FY24, but again, we are behind our office still. Uh, it is anticipated that our expenditures were less and our revenues are a little bit more due to booking to grants, but uh, this time we don't have those numbers and they probably will not be finalized until we get to our audit, which is scheduled in the last week of August. Um, and we'll try to get some of the actual board reports published or caught up at that time. Um, 
attendee enrollment update? Yes, uh, right now our enrollment update is, uh, and I left mine in the office, uh, but it is uh, about 30 students less than, than what we have built the budget around, um, but that's nothing unusual this time of year, so our hopes is that uh, those numbers grow as we open the school doors up, but those are the kids that we have registered at this point. Can you guys hear me, Tristan? And Melanie, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear, or I can at least. Okay. Uh, so yeah. we're, we're, we're hoping that uh, those numbers improve, um, and I'm sure they will by the time we get the doors open, like I said. But we're about 1043, and um, I think we built the budget on 1077, if I remember correctly. 1047. 1047. Okay. And can I ask a question? Go ahead, Jason. I'm actually trying to get my calculator out here, but the 1047, does that include the REACH school students? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm trying to pull up the budget. Because my recollection was we built the budget on 1,111 or 1,112 students, including the homeschool students, like 1077 brick and mortar, and then the additional 38. Um, 40 or so. I don't believe the report yeah, I saw that, had the intensive students in there. Did it, did it the intensive no, students? Well, not broken out. Yeah. I, I'm not sure why we have an enrollment update at this point, Tristan, in all honesty, because yeah, yeah. all we have is last spring's numbers, so um, there's really okay. uh, not much of a reason to get too excited at this point until we open the doors. Yeah, well, we'll start getting excited in October. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the end of September rolls around, right? That's when we offer a free car for all students that show up, right? <laughs> McDonald's gift card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, do you want to go ahead then? The uh, superintendent update? Yeah. Please. Please. Yes, I mean, not, yeah. Sounds like I'm in high school. Yeah. <laughs> um, just a couple of things that, uh, you know, uh, Port Leslie and Dawn in the district office, I've been in there every day trying to get the budget numbers that everybody's want me to hear uh, and it is I'm sure looking better than what we anticipated um, and at the same time um, I um, I don't know how to tactfully say this so I just being the non tactful person that I am most of the time um, I'm, I have been having conversations uh, especially in Juno um, we met with the uh, Department of Ed um, on last Monday, um, not this current last Monday, but the one before that. How's that? Um, and I really, I, I was blown away when I looked at the fact that the state hasn't added on to the BSA really that much since I left in 2014 and how you've kept the doors open, or how any school district has kept the doors open, uh, is pretty incredible from my perspective. And I think, you know, when the governor came out last year and uh, put out some bad press about these high reserves that we all had, I think everybody, uh, from what I understand, is trying to spin down the money that came from the COVID situation. Um, and, uh, but I think he used that to a certain extent or to a great extent, however you want to look at it, uh, not to fund us like the Senate and the, the House had done to, to the 680 and drop it down to 340. And I, I, I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's going to be absolutely critical this year that something is added to that base because that cap doesn't go up unless the base goes up. And 
if they want to continue to push things like they did with the Juneau School District, rest assured, will be another school district that they come after in a year or two. And uh, I have always thought and believed that the community of Sitka values uh, education to the point we couldn't ask for a better assembly right now. We couldn't ask for the community to do any more than what they're doing. What we have to do is get the governor off the dime. And I think it's going to take every one of us to do that. It's critical to get something on that BSA because everything else can go away. I think I've told a couple of you, a couple of you in our in our meetings, that I I don't feel comfortable like the 340 that they put in the budget this year to put positions into that. Based upon that $340, it's one. It could be one-time money. It could be gone at the end of this school year. So we have to get as many people as we possibly can from this community and every other community to get out there and start beating the drum for an increase to the BSA. That's the only way schools are going to survive in this state. Most of the superintendents I worked with when I was here before are gone. Uh, a lot of the superintendents uh, have to worry about the political arena and keeping their job, I think. I don't have to worry about that. And so, as a board, if you need to rein me in sometimes when I say some things, feel free to rein me in, or at least attempt to rein me in, because I'm, I'm, as people will tell you that have I've worked with, I'm pretty passionate about public education, and I do not believe that not increasing, or I believe that not increasing the foundation formula is killing school districts in this state. They put the Reeds Act. We're fortunate that the, our two principals and Sarah wrote the grant for this year. But it's one-time money. So this new thing that the governor felt was so important for us to do, there was no funding behind it, or very little, $30 per student. That doesn't even pay for a teacher as far as in the Sitka School District. We have got to continue First, politely ask for an increase, and if politeness doesn't do it, then we're going to have to start pounding on doors. And I know our representative, and I know Mr. Stedman, I, I believe they will help us get there. But this school board, it's critical as a board that you speak out. Let me transition from there to the next spot that, that we need a board. The board's position is just as, as important, if not important, as a superintendent's position. We need consistency on the board. I was fortunate when I became the superintendent here in 2001 that I had a very, very experienced board. They had an inexperienced superintendent, but a very experienced board, and it helped me get through some rough spots in my first couple years. Board members, it takes time. Danny and I had a good conversation. I'd love to see Danny stay on the board. I understand why she can't. But if we're ever going to build the program that we want to build in Sitka, that consistency on the school board is critical. So I encourage members of the community that haven't run for the board before to consider running for the school board, but consider it as a five to 10 year type of term. Because to be on there for a couple of years doesn't, it's not always the best thing. We'll take whatever people are willing to give and volunteer because this is not an easy job. Being on the school board, you pay me to have people yell at me. Okay? <laughs> I can handle that. 
but you don't get paid for that. And when you have to go through tough times, it's not easy. And then when you go to the grocery store and somebody else beats up on you, it makes it even more difficult. But it's critical to have a consistent board that's just as passionate about education as any employee or any community member that we have. So, again, thank you all for being on the board right now. I hope you will stay on the board, all of you, um, because a good school district is built upon school board and our staff. That'll take me to my next point. I got to give kudos to Chris over there because I don't know how much you guys feel that he's helped hold this district together, but I think he's done an incredible job. Uh, special Ed Director is a full-time job in and of itself, and he's filled to a certain extent to a great extent, special ed director and assistant superintendent uh, these last probably three, four years, or at least three, I guess, or two, since John uh, recommended the cut of the assistant suit. So I also would like to thank uh, Deidre, because coming into a new district, I know a lot of the people here. She's come in and just hit the floor running and, and done some wonderful things. Next point, I think we have an almost an entirely new staff in that business office, and that's a learning curve that is unbelievable when it comes to school finance. And so, Leslie and the group are working as hard as they can possibly work to get us the numbers that we need. We're going to be faced with some tough times this spring. Uh, hopefully not as tough as I originally thought. For those people out there that I've talked to and uh, painted a fairly bleak picture, I apologize. Still not going to be bright and rosy, but it's not as going to be as bad as I originally thought if the numbers end up uh, where we think they will end up. So, but that job and the changeover of people in there it takes a good two years to three years to start to understand, and even then, sometimes, you don't have a total grasp of what it is that you're doing. I've had the pleasure of meeting with the secretaries uh, so far this year. I have met with the administrative team. We had a great meeting yesterday with all the administrators in the district. Uh, I met with multiple teachers in the district. Uh, some retired years ago, but still, they're still around, so it's good to, it's good to have conversations with those people. Um, went over, as did Tom the other day, uh, to see the new greenhouse at Pacific High School and the things they're doing over there. Some great things, folks. 200, what did you say, 267 or 276, 276 pounds of vegetables they grew for the hot lunch program there. Their goal is to hopefully help people with vegetables in this community with that new greenhouse. That would be extremely nice to see. Uh, just some good things. I also mentioned to the paper the other day that I am so impressed when you look at the Centennial Building and you look at the Sea Walk and you look at all the good things that have happened in this community I spent 16 years here. It's the longest time I've spent in any one town in my career. And it's because it is a community. And there's a lot of good people in this community that believe that if we all work together, we can get some things done. So it's my goal and my hope this year to try to bring us together as a district, but also as a community, still valuing education, education of every child. That in and of itself, I believe, should be the mission and the goal for this school district. Um, and I thank you for allowing me to come back to this community um, because I do love this community. So 
Uh, let's see what I've got. The Juno letter that Tristan happened to mention, uh, we're waiting. I, I have read the response letter, which was a very well written letter. We haven't heard anything. Juno gave them 14 days or asked for 14 day response, and we haven't seen or heard anything. I do have an audio conference next week with the superintendents again because we were asked at our meeting um, how many people had done basically what this district had done and that is put $450 into our budget on a per pupil basis. Almost every school district there raised their hand. I think Petersburg was one of the few places that didn't bet on some money coming from the state. So everybody's in the same boat we're in right now. And we're hoping that that helps build some of the pressure on the governor to, to start standing up and saying, OK, we can do a little bit better job of financially supporting the school districts in the state. Uh, I hope to have a, a, a better report for you uh, next time. Uh, but it's been a little hectic uh, uh, getting started here. Seems like one meeting after another, and it's 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock before I even know, know what's happening. So, uh, but it's nice to be back in Sitka, and I look forward to helping this community and the school district try to meet the challenges that we're going to be faced with. That's about it, Mr. Chair. Establishing budget committees, strategic planning committee, discussion of scheduling work sessions. With with this, I believe um, Tristan has um, has a lot to a lot, a lot of input with this. So Tristan, I'll just uh, turn over turn the mic over to you if you like. If you want to start with. Um, Reestablishing the budget committee, or do you um, yeah, sounds good. Do we want do we want to do any public comment before do that afterwards, or it's not a motion. It's not a motion. It's not a motion. This is just a discussion. Okay. It, it's, yeah. it's yeah, it's just a discussion. We're not the, we're not making cool. any any decisions right now. It's just a, just a discussion around the board. Oh, sounds good. Uh, just as a little footnote to that, I would be open um, either on this item or the following one to, to take some public comment just after we have a chance to discuss if there's any additional thoughts from the public, um, if the rest of the board is interested in that. Um, but I'm going to start. So in terms of reestablishing the budget committee, um, the first thing I'm, I just kind of wanted to share is I wanted to share some of my thoughts around the reestablishment of this budget committee, and I think this is applicable to the strategic planning committee as well as really all of our committees. And so, just wanted to share with the board and um, you know staff and the public kind of what's going through my head as I as I kind of think about moving one of these forward to an actual official vote to reestablish. Um, you know, so so there are really four things that I I've, I've been thinking over the last year plus since I. I joined the board as far as committees, and, and for me, committees are just so integral to what we do and are really that, that official mechanism that we can use to engage all stakeholders and do what I see as our duty in terms of, of really engaging in code decision making with parents, with students, with staff, with uh, partner organizations, with the community, the sem you know, kind of all of those stakeholders. So, you know, as I'm thinking about reestablishment of committees and our overall committee structure, I'm really thinking about what our priorities are. Um, I think both as a school board and as a district. Uh, secondly, really thinking about our capacity. What do we have the capacity to take on? And again, as a board, what do we have the capacity to take on? 
uh, me as an individual school board member, what do I have the capacity to, to take on and do well? And I think also what is the capacity of staff? Because uh, inherently these committees involve some staff support and staff time, and, and I know how stretched staff are as well. So, so really thinking about that capacity in terms of committees <coughs> and to do them well, and I think to do them long term and not have them, you know, here's a committee of this, you know. Uh, the third one, you know, really thinking about what makes sense as a committee of the board versus a committee that lives under the superintendent as an ad hoc committee or an advisory body. Um, you know, something similar, more similar, I think, to the Baranoff Elementary School um, naming committee, which is more of that level of committee. I know um, it reports to the board, but um, really at that level, or some of the other ones that I believe, you know, technology committee, those types of things. Um, and I think that's particularly true of the strategic plan. Uh, you know, it's really the staff who implement the plan. It's our responsibility to engage the public, to monitor and evaluate that plan, um, to assure that it's being implemented with fidelity. So, so that's something I've been thinking about. And then lastly, just timing. Uh, you know, with the upcoming changeover of the school board, with new members coming on, with, with Steve coming on in an interim capacity, what makes sense to move forward at this time versus, you know, later on? And also, just how much stability can we, can we hope for um, is another lingering question for me. So I think those are just four things I'm considering overall when I think about what to bring forward, you know, what committees um, do we move forward with and do I invest my time in. So, for, you know, specific to the budget committee, uh, I've attached a memo or there's a memo attached to the agenda here, which really covers um, my ideas on the budget committee. Um, and this is informed by conversations I've had with, with other folks involved. Um, but what this does is it outlines a proposed purpose, a proposed composition, and then a proposed charge, and just gives some, some, some general ideas for that, for the board to consider, uh, for staff to consider, for other stakeholders to consider. And, and so I'm bringing this forward now just as a discussion, because what I'd really like to see um, is a lot of input over the next month uh, to really craft and shape this proposal if it does move forward. Um, you know, so you see here kind of those, you know, I touched on the general, um, you know, the purpose is to provide input to the board um, on budget and finance related issues, to educate the public about the school district's budget, school district finances, and budget-related issues affecting the district, and to act as advocates. I think that's especially true when we talk about the BSA and that need for us to have a unified voice with all stakeholders locally and at a statewide level um, to really advocate for that change we need. Um, the charge includes a little bit more specific, um, you know, some specific activities that the committee could engage in I also looked at the Juno School District's um, finance committee and some budget or finance committees from other school districts around the country. So I kind of pulled some ideas from there. Um, one of the things that Juno School District does, for example, is, is the committee actually sets some of their priorities and the topics they want to cover at their initial August meeting for that coming school year. I proposed a composition here. And right now, it's, it's very much similar to the strategic planning um, committee. So again, thinking about capacity of people to be involved in these. Is it realistic for two committees with 43 people to exist and to be productive? So that's something I really want feedback on, is like, who needs to be involved in this and what capacity? Um, you know, I put a note there that maybe 43 is too many. Um, you know, the initial strategic planning committee I think it was around that, actually. Um, so that's a, a question there. And then I just included some appendix documents in this. Um, some of those example um, agendas from Juno School District's Finance Committee, in, in case those are helpful. I included the, um, our current board and committee structure in there as well. And that's from the past, so some of those assignments are old. 
I'm sure Don has a more recent version. I included our bylaws on board committees just as a reference. And then a couple of useful budget related documents that I have found helpful is the, the FY24 school district uh, budget introduction. The presentation we heard Frank give maybe 10 times or so um, in the last cycle, but I think it, it has a lot of really good condensed information on the district budget. And then I also included a, a resource um, from Alasbo on developing your school district's budget. And this was geared more towards um, school budget officials, but I think it's informative for school board members and just for any stakeholder to kind of understand those components of the budget process and constructing a budget as we kind of move towards discussing and potentially reestablishing the budget committee. So I'm gonna stop talking now, but I would say basically, you know, and I'm gonna talk just a little longer. <laughs> My thinking here is that given where we are with the BSA, given where we've been with some of the budget related issues, whether it's student activities and you know, transparency and, and some of those issues. But really, where we are with the budget, and Steve touched on this, right, we have $340 one-time BSA equivalent. So that's not guaranteed for next year, and that equates to two significant cuts just alone. We pulled almost $2 million from our fund balance. You know, so that money is not gonna be there, or not gonna be there in the amount, most likely, that it was in the past few years. That is the potential for 20 positions to be cut if we cannot uh, cover that two million. We talked about the half a million that's supporting the Reads Act that's gonna go away after this grant is over. We have the issue with city non-instructional contributions kind of lingering out there, which would have significant impact on our budget, um, you know, our non-instructional budget facilities the pool, student activities, and potentially Prop 1. And then we also have the question of enrollment. Our re enrollment has been declining, and we're not necessarily sure what those trends will be. So there's just, to me, it feels like the budget is the priority right now. So where I currently see myself wanting to spend time, um, you know, and this goes back to our retreat last year when Mitch and I were kind of tasked with getting that mid to long term view of the budget, increasing understanding of the budget among school board members and stakeholders. This is kind of where I feel like I want to invest my time and energy um, over the coming school year. So that's where I stand now and um, probably hopefully we'll have less to say on the, the next item as well, but just wanted to put it out there for, for discussion. Um, yeah. Uh, hey Tristan, this is Felix. <clears throat> um, I was just looking through the, the memo that you sent for the, the budget committee, and I believe that the third one, which is the, the, the composition of the committee, um, in the memo it says the strategic planning committee, um, so I, I'm not sure if that is supposed to be the budget committee, um, because then the strategic planning, strategic planning committee has a different composition than this strategic planning committee composition that is listed on the memo. Good catch, thank you, Felix. Uh, that should say budget committee. I used the strategic planning committee uh, previous memo as a template for this, so that was one place. I did not catch it, so thank you, Felix. Okay. This no should problem. be for the budget committee, although it is somewhat similar, uh, All right. but not exactly the same. Thank you for catching that. Well, thank you. I'm in agreement that 43 on a budget committee does not sound like an enjoyable way to spend the year, but uh, I, I'm fully supportive of a budget committee, but 43 is a rather large committee, so uh, 43 for the strategic plan, when, uh, if you're still doing them the same way we used to do them, that makes sense, but a budget committee um, I'm not sure we get 43 people in this state that understand school finance, so uh, it would make a little uh, daunting uh, task. 
And if I, if I can, Todd, I'm not sure if I, I don't think I included next steps necessarily in this memo as a section, but what I had in mind was, you know, getting input from the board, uh, seeing if there's another board member who would be interested in working on this with me, and then the two of us meeting with Steve, um, and whoever Steve feels is appropriate, just to go over this again. Sorry, I've got a, a three-year-old here chiming in. Maybe he wants to be on the committee. Uh, but basically, hold on, come here, come here. I had a chance.
Sorry. One last thing that I that I do want to kind of point out as well. I think one of the kind of beauties of our policies and bylaws is if something doesn't work, we can re, re, you know um, go back and revise it and update it. So I don't want to let kind of perfection get in the way of progress. And so you know I think kind of getting something started, you know figuring it out over the next month or so getting something started, but then if we need to refine it, I think that, you know, that's something we should do. It's, and maybe we build in some, you know, trigger mechanism similar to strategic planning where, you know, we re-review that charge on an annual basis. Okay. I just wanted to, uh, this is Danny. Um, thank you for doing this, Tristan. I definitely, uh, I'm a new person to all of this, but the budget is um, like a very complex, and I think having some committee like this would be really helpful. It seems like a really good investment and a way to engage um, more people into the process so that it's not like a, any sort of us versus them that sometimes uh, comes about when you're having those discussions during the year. Right, and it, it goes into transparency. It just makes it more visible for everybody to be part of it. So everyone's, more people are stakeholders, more people know, know what's going on. So I totally agree. I agree with that part. Todd? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'd be happy and willing to work with Tristan on uh, anything having to do with the uh, budget or the budget committee. So um, Tristan, if uh, that works out, let me know. and. Uh, I can give you a hand. Thank you all. Tristan, did you get over on? <laughs> no, I'm here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely open that. I would leave that up to the board, you know, in terms of who who kind of works on this at the board level, though. Okay. I don't want to make any decisions as an individual member. Okay. I, it sounds like we have a volunteer, so that's a good start. <laughs> Yeah. Happy to, yeah, I mean, that'll be great then. Yeah. <laughs> Look forward to working on this. Excellent. Okay. Well, good. I'll leave that guy here for a second. So that was Budget Committee. Uh, item 11B, um, reestablishing strategic plan committee. planning committee. Thoughts, thoughts on that, Tristan? I mean, I think that's pretty well covered in the memo and some of our previous discussions. I really just want some additional input, similar to you know what Freddie shared earlier, and persons to be heard. That you know, that kind of input is super helpful. I think for all of us is to hear from people and hear like what our priorities is. The budget committee a priority? Is the strategic plan committee? A priority and uh, you know, kind of seeing who's interested in taking those pieces on. Right. And would you suggest, even with um, um, Mr. Bradshaw just being interim, it's still, an, it's still a good idea to get the plan committee at, at least started, I would suggest. With with the with with the thought of a new superintendent coming in to be part of it, degree of degree that or I re I really don't, to be honest, have an answer. Um, you know, I think it's you know, yeah, it goes back to that. You know, I think discussion, and maybe it's not something we can answer until October in the elections. But you know, who from who from the board is interested? In serving on, you know, the strategic planning committee, or doing some heavy lifting there, um, you know, who would be interested in budget? Because we've also talked about, you know, at our last that October um, kind of visioning goal setting session, we had talked about establishing a curriculum committee, you know, and that's something that we've talked about potentially doing through work sessions instead, since that came up back in October. 
Um, you know, we've talked about ad hoc committees kind of looking at, and this is maybe tied to curriculum, looking at the Alaska Reads Act. Um, we talked about reestablishing the site councils at schools. Um, so I think, you know, maybe one of our upcoming work sessions could just be on the committee structure and we could have an opportunity to, because I don't think we can make this decision in isolation of like the strategic planning committee or the budget. You know, it has to be kind of across the board. Because we also have student activities. We have uh, the policy committee and all of that. And, and we don't have a full complement uh, board right now, as you said. Well, that'd be different, as you said, but come election, you may not. So we don't have any. Um, <coughs> we'll have a we'll have an empty spot. We'll have an empty seat, so we'll have to fill that. So it would be good to have a full complement of the board when we do start doing things like this. Mr. Chair. Yes. So I guess that brings up a point, Tristan, about the policy committee. So I would anticipate that once you get more um, concrete ideas and stuff, this would go through the policy committee first on the strategic plan and the budget committee. Uh, my feeling would be, I mean, if it's something that's included within the policy, then Yes, um, I know that hasn't been the practice in the past um, since these are committees of the board. But I'm, you know, I don't, I hadn't thought about that. But I don't, yeah. I mean, I think that could be another committee that provides input and valuable input. So I'm definitely open to that as well. I think that would be, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Any, you know, any committee. I mentioned, you know, in the budget committee the you know, the, the Student Activities Committee and maybe how those overlap in terms of making recommendations on how student activities funding um, is allocated. So that's another committee that potentially, you know, could review and weigh in on, on this as well. So I think the more input, the better. Okay. All right. Um, any more about the reestablishing the budget committee or the strategic planning committee for now? Okay. Well, let's move on to 11B. I don't know. Start at 11C. Um, assigning assembly liaisons. Um, I understand uh, Tristan would like to be the assembly liaison. Um, yeah, this is just one I, I'm open to, to being that. Um, you know, I don't currently have a committee or liaison assignment. Um, I've been working on some of these things, but it's something I'm open to, you know, with my kind of experience having previously served on the assembly and, um, you know, understanding kind of city operations and, and all of that, but I'm not I just think it's important for us as a board to have a liaison. You know, I listen to the assembly meetings and, you know, it's, I think it's been, there's not a whole lot of times that we have representation at those meetings and I just think that's an opportunity for us to strengthen our relationship with the, the assembly and the city. So I'd like to see someone serve there. Um, you know, and also, I mean, this comes back again to, uh, I think committee assignments and such with the turnover, um, you know, we had two people on the, the policy committee with Melanie and Blossom. I don't think anybody, um, unless I missed that, was reassigned to the policy committee or, you know, student activities, um, all of those. So anyways, I think it's important if anybody else is interested in taking this on, I would defer as well, uh, but yeah, would be interested. Uh, yeah, normally this is something we do after the election in October, but um, is this something you'd like to start now? We can, if, if there, there's no vote, this is just something we can have you start immediately to it. Yeah, if nobody else is Mr. Injured. Chair. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, no. So is this something that Blossom was fulfilling, or was this Mitch, or? I don't who, think she Who was doing it before? Blossom. It was Blossom. It was Blossom, yes. Okay. 
I support um, Tristan. Thank you for volunteering, Tristan. No problem. I feel like I, other people have committee assignments, so I better <laughs> do something, you know, to contribute. It, normally, it's not a it's not a vote, right? It's just a because of their, yeah. Right? It's it's usually what we do at, at the fall retreat. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Scheduling times for these, or is this something we are looking for um, input as far as actual goals, goal settings, and evaluation tools? Or are we looking for times to set these up? This question, I guess. Mr. Chairman, I would suggest um, prioritizing these and deciding um, which month you want to have, if you want to have more than one in a month. Um, I can send out a survey for dates and see if we can come up with something, a right. consensus. Okay. I have a question for Scott, for Steve, or... Um, you know, be, yeah. Um, just in terms of like with the budget revision, we probably want to wait until the FY23 books are all closed and everything. Is that right? And and then staff have a chance to work on that. It also doesn't make doesn't make sense to do this one prior to kind of having a better idea about our enrollment enrollment numbers as well. Kind of going back to that earlier question. The budget revision part, Tristan? Yeah, the budget revision work session, whether it makes sense to, to do that after FY23 is closed and also once we kind of have a better idea of what our enrollment numbers will look like. That's just for Steve or Tiffany, yeah. You can't see me shaking my head up and down evidently, um, but I was agreeing with you, Tristan. Uh, there's not much sense in having a, uh, the work session for the budget until after we get through the calendar. So, uh, my former school district, uh, we used to have uh, one work session a month. Usually, it focused on um, whatever issue the school board wanted to focus on at that time. Um, you could probably have a meeting once a week if you chose to do so, um, but I also know. Um, and I'll quote Danny uh, here, uh, sometimes too many meetings can create an issue for board members where you don't get people that uh, have that many free nights in their schedule. Uh, at the same time, uh, work sessions are critical to, to get the things done that you want to get done. So, you know, if you want to talk about the strategic plan in the work session, then the September board meeting or September date would be a good time to do that. Usually you try to keep about two weeks in between the two. Um, you have to, of course, advertise a work session. No business <laughs> takes place, but it's, it's public. Um, so, you know, if you want to have a work session on the strategic plan or any other issue that the board feels is critical, if I have something uh, that I need to bring to the board, sometimes we negotiate whether that should be work session or uh, at a regular meeting. But uh, work sessions are a good thing if people have the time to handle it. Um, and then you have the scheduling conflicts that you always have uh, with people being out of town, including the superintendent. Um, so 
let me know what you'd like to do and, and we could sit down. Um, we could schedule the whole year's work session if you wanted to, understanding that we would probably have to look at changes on occasion. So you can send out to the surveys for scheduling and such? Yes, I can send out a survey. Um, do you know which one you want to cover first? Um, not the budget revision. Not that one. So. I was thinking that the goal setting seems like the first. Is that the, that's the goals for this year, right? Superintendent goal setting? Well, uh, Superintendent Gold said you have the board gold setting in October, I believe, the first or second weekend in October. Or we bring somebody from the school board association over. Oh, okay. uh, historically, I've presented what I feel like I should work on as, as my goals, and my number one priority will be the budget this year, mm -hmm. um, unless the board decides otherwise. Three rules of being a superintendent: the board's always right, the board's always right, and the board's always right. Is it the three rules, Todd? Sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, in that case, um, if nobody else has a comment, I have a thought. What is it? Uh, I'm. I'm kind of wondering if it would make sense to do something focused on the strategic plan um, either this month or in September so that as we go into that October retreat that it's grounded in the district's priorities and, and the work we are doing. Um, you know, potentially do a little bit of data with that, like looking at school climate connectedness survey results or looking at some student data just so as we begin to set goals, you know, as Steve sets goals, as we set goals, as we're thinking about both the board goals and the district goals, there's some kind of lead up and some thought to that and that again it's grounded in, you know, the, the priorities as articulated by our key stakeholders. So I could see kind of potentially doing like strategic planning and then dipping into superintendent and board goal setting a little bit. Good point. Todd, I would, I would ask for relief for the staff for the rest of August because things are picking up pace rather rapidly and so to have any more meetings than we already have on the agenda and get the school doors open. So I would recommend we start the work sessions in September. Um, Again, the board is always right, so I'm willing to do whatever it is you would like to, to do. But at the same time, I just know how everybody feels like we're scrambling already, and um, it's not gonna, it's gonna, not gonna reduce anybody's anxiety by having uh, another meeting on their schedule. Okay. I support that statement. Um, I know as parents and I'm sure staff, there's a lot that happens in the beginning of the school year. So September is probably a better month for a meeting unless we really need to have one. So we can shoot for September. And I feel like Tristan's uh, kind of modified idea of the um, strategic plan and the goal setting with the superintendent. Kind of talk about both of those. So we're going to shoot for that. Okay. Is that agreeable? Sounds good for everybody?
13 future agenda items upcoming. Uh, 13A, first day back for teachers, August 15th. Mr. Chair, yes, sir. I would invite the board, if you would like to come, we have a get together with the entire staff of the school district. I always like to introduce the board if you're there, um, because you're an important part of the district. Um, we started at about 8.30, I believe, is that correct? Uh, so 8.30, uh, we're done by 11. Uh, not mandatory that anybody show up, but um, we usually have a pretty good time introducing the entire uh, new staff to each one of the buildings. The principals introduce their people. And I do a little talk, and then we go out and try to get the doors open and things like that. Okay. But you're all welcome is what I'm saying. Where, where is that? Uh, yeah, the pack. Okay. okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that invitation. Uh, so 13, yeah, 13 A, first day back for teachers, August 15th. Uh, item 13 B, first day back for students will be August 22nd. Item 13 C, next regular school board meeting, September 6th, uh, 6 p.m. here right here in uh, Arrington Centennial Hall. And with that, let's see in the meeting. Uh, I'm gonna have a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn this meeting. I have a second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, this meeting's been adjourned at 7.26.